Ballast songs have changed my life. Threat, 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 threat. On October 6, 2018, I released my first Battle Song Collection video. You may have seen it. It was the starting point for this entire channel as it exists today. At the time, I made the video simply due to my passion for Battle Songs and my need for content creation. I formulated the idea of a collection video and produced the entire thing within a 24-hour period without sleeping. This wasn't something that I was making to go viral or start my career. It was just the product of the motivation to create and a love for this hobby. But even before that, I loved Bala songs. My first real Bala song post on Instagram was February 5th, 2017, a photo of a Benchmade 51 clone that I had anodized myself. Prior to Instagram, the only Bally's I had were cheap Chinese crap bought from various gas stations, thrift stores, and occasionally from Farmer Brandon hiding in a bush. It's organic. These old knives are in some of our early videos as props, such as the first video on our channel to ever have a Bala song in it. Clever gaming reference. In this video, our old friend Daniel stabs an early iteration of a Brandon clone, AKA Logan, in the back. You know, like a normal Tuesday. But these first cheap Bala songs weren't really that important. Instead, my journey into the hobby was started through Instagram. 2017 was also the first year that I attended Blade Show in Atlanta, which is where I began to experience the hobby for what it really was, a community. Time passed and my little collection grew, with me getting my first Pelican case on February 14th, 2018, which is almost exactly a year after my first Balasong related post in general. This case was made by my case builder, who I would end up working with four years later to produce our own cases. And this marks the first time that I was thinking of all of my knives together as a collection. This was also when I saw the writing on the wall and decided to use the case to limit myself to six Balasongs. And we all know how that turned out. Oh. Oh. Nipples. Anyway, there were a few changes to my collection over the next few months with knives bought and sold, but it all quickly coalesced into the release of my first Balasong related video. I had no way of knowing at the time how this video would literally change my life, but looking back on it, I think it kind of makes sense. Over the next year, I made a few more videos with the release of the JK Design Monarch review on June 24th, 2019, marking what I would consider to be the first real Will Hirsch video. This is the first time that Brandon and I worked together to make one of these. And even though we didn't totally plan on it at the time, it worked out so well that here we are years later doing the same thing. I don't like this joke anymore. Over the next year, we really focused in on the channel, taking it more seriously and producing more content until the release of My Balasong Collection 2019 at the start of 2020. During the production of the 2019 collection video, I remembered a conversation between Brandon and I very distinctly. You see, I was feeling a little frustrated about film jobs having fallen off during the winter months, which happens every year. And Brandon too was annoyed at the lack of work during that time. Together, while eating lunch during the filming of that video, we decided that we really wanted to make this YouTube thing work. We decided that we wanted to put in the effort to really make this thing happen. And then 2020 happened and all the film jobs went away completely. So we really didn't have a choice, but you know what? We were gonna make it work. And so we went in hard during these next years. One of our biggest videos, an intro to Balasong Flipping, went live right as the Backstreet Boys reunion tour hit, meaning that it came at the perfect time for a lot of people to need a new hobby. Then we made the cheap Amazon unboxing video, which essentially went viral and carried us into new projects like merch, the Patreon, and working with amazing companies. We got to tour the Squid Industries factory up close and see in person the way their Balasongs are produced. Our Balasong Collection 2022 video is easily one of the most insane productions we've ever made. And the Vulp reveal is probably the most editing work I've ever put into a video on this channel. From producing more content than ever to creating creating projects outside of the videos alone, we worked tirelessly to expand and solidify ourselves as stable within this niche community. Stability being the key word here as making this YouTube thing a job rather than a hobby is really tough, it turns out, especially when you need to support two people or like a million Brandon clones. <laughs> Speaking of stability, if you'd like to support us, consider doing so for as little as three bucks a month on Patreon. Patrons get early access to videos like these and cannot be harmed by natural means. Now, long-winded introductions aside, welcome to the 2023 edition of My Balasong Collection. Grails 
are nothing new to anyone in the balisong hobby. Chasing that high of getting a knife that you've always dreamed about is such a draw for anyone, and I think it's obvious why. For me, I've always had an interesting relationship with the idea of grails. From my humble CCC origins, I didn't even know what some of the best balisongs were. However, as I made my way deeper into the hobby, my interests shifted, and I found myself suddenly aware of the depths of desire that were possible in this godforsaken realm. My first grail was a custom Benchmade 51, specifically the carbon fiber flitanium version I now own. Then it was the Jerry Hum Prodigy. Then it was the Max Ace Covenant. Then it was Brandon's Butter Knife Ballot. Brandon, stop adding lines to the script without telling me. No. This is all to say that I'm a little bitch boy. Brandon, God damn it! <laughs> this is all to say that I have had many a grail in my time. Slowly climbing the ladder in terms of knives that I desire has led me down a dark and twisted path that eventually ended up at content creation? I don't know, don't think about it too hard. Anyways, this is all to say that one specific maker has been in the realm of Balasong Grails for me ever since my beginnings in the hobby. That would be Palatheus. If you somehow aren't aware, Pale is a maker in the Balasong hobby that has been around for a long time, and his designs had already achieved legendary status pretty early on. Of course, this is a maker that has been somewhat rife with controversy over the years, but I believe his Balasongs are, for the most part, worthy of that legendary title. And so, if you remember, in the last collection video, I said, until I inevitably buy another one immediately after this video goes live. Which was even more true than I could have realized while scripting it because I did literally buy this immediately after the video went live, like hours later. Man, I'm predictable. And normally this is where Brandon would pop up and say something obnoxious, so maybe I'm not predictable. You are. Fuck! Anyways, this is the Bui Ronin by Palatheus. As you can see by the engraving on the blade, this one was made in October of 2018 and is number 14, the last from that batch. I'd still love to produce a full video about this Balasong in the coming future, but for now, I'll say this. This thing is even better than I could have hoped for. It's blocky and heavy for sure, but it flips like a dream. It's got absolutely no play and the grip is shockingly good. The balance is perfect for my preference preferences, and I really love getting into a good groove on this thing. They say never to meet your heroes, but honestly, I'm very happy I met this one. It's been a great experience. Also, I love the sort of industrial design language that Pale has on all of his knives. There's a bit of a handmade roughness to all of his products that I personally actually really love. Sure, it doesn't have the polish of some other top makers, but I think that's what makes a Polytheus knife a Polytheus knife. It's got character in a way that not many others do and I think that's why it's a great addition to my collection. Next up is one of the best plastic balisongs that I've ever used, and something that changed my mind about how balisongs could work in the first place. The Tay Flipper is an incredible trainer in its own right. When I was first introduced to the idea of a fully 3D printed balisong, I was rightfully a bit skeptical. However, the moment I got my hands on this thing, I realized how wrong I was. The Tay Flipper is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of current 3D printed trainers and live blades? It's plastic and it's sharp and it's scary. Ooh. This is all to say that I love my Tay Flipper. This Balasong has become my go-to plastic trainer, and I think it means so much to me, partially because historically, it just feels so fresh and new. Sure, Squid Industries pioneered the concept of plastic as a trainer material, but 3D printing technology at the time wasn't really up to par with the milled design of the Squiddy. Now, however, the tech has caught up, much like how cloning technology has allowed me to create a personal army of sorts, which is fantastic fantastic at following orders, but cannot aim at anything for shit. Like seriously, there could be 20 Brandon clones and one hero, and yet not a single one of them can hit a shot. And I'm like, what's the point? We've already spent this much money creating the most perfect private army in the galaxy, and yet I feel as helpless as when we first angered the gods with our hubris. This is all to say that I love my Tay Flipper, which I said twice to make you believe me more. It's extremely well-balanced and feels great to flip. I love the weights hidden within the handles 
and embedded into the blade. However, the main thing that draws me to this Balasong and the concept of 3D printing in general is the customization opportunities it provides. As you can see, this design is incredibly customized to me with my signature and logo on beautiful orange handles. I love the fact that it can be so in tune with what I enjoy and I think that it enhances my connection with it substantially. Both the fact that it flips as well as it does and that it's just cool is easily enough to solidify its place in my collection forever. Now, the time of the Tay Flipper has passed, but Tay isn't stopping. You can buy the Calico for much less than the original, and although I find that the Calico fits my flipping preferences slightly less, it is still quite a good trainer for the price. Blades is a maker that kind of came out of nowhere back in 2021. They posted the first 3D printed concepts of their trainer design in early November and rapidly began improving and implementing their Balasong into a final product by the middle of 2022. All of this work ended up creating this, the Bite Blades Titan. The Titan is a very interesting Balasong that I first tried at Blade Show 2022. From the moment I was handed it, I knew I wanted one. Its design is very original and the concepts in its construction were new and innovative. As you can see, it's an aluminum sandwich construction Balasong, which is already rare enough these days. However, the standout feature of this Balasong is the spacer design. It has large plastic spacers that extend out from the bottom of the handles, which actually helps protect the aluminum from drops and allows an extra level of customization to the trainer. Their specific shape also acts as jimping and gives a great amount of grip for ladders and more. The flipping experience of this trainer is currently my favorite of any trainer, and it's the one that I reach for when I really want to practice some tricks. It's a unique experience, but I think that enhances it for me. However, this brings me to the sad news that, at least currently, Bite Blades disappeared almost as quickly as they came into the hobby. I really hope they're doing well, and if they do come back in the future, I'll be supporting them full force, but for now, sadly, this Balasong just isn't available for purchase. Speaking of Balasongs that aren't available, here's a motorized personal vehicle consisting of two wheels mounted side by side beneath a platform that the rider stands on while holding on to handlebars controlled by the way the rider distributes their weight. A segue? To talking about a Balasong that is available right now, the Vulp. We already made a massive video about the Vulp last year, which you can see right here. So I'll keep this brief. In terms of my growth in this hobby, nothing could be more representative of how far I've come than this trainer. This Balasong is an amalgamation of all of my experience as a flipper, filtered through the lens of a beginner that knows nothing. I wanted to create the perfect starting place, an endpoint that anyone can use as an accessible and quality option when entering the Balasong hobby. And I believe that we achieved this goal with the Vulp. And I believe it not because of my own thoughts on the product, but because of you. There's an inherent shift in perspective when you've been working on something for a while by yourself and then you release it into the public. For me, I found it to be an almost profound experience going from a prototype that I had in my hands to something that other people were actually buying. The idea that people wanted this, much less the fact that they could actually get a hold of it, was wild to me. However, what really hit me is the fact that as people post end of the year photos of their collections on Reddit and Instagram, I've noticed more and more that they have a Vulp. This somehow touched me far more than the initial release. The idea that people within this hobby that I love have responded so positively to something that I created is just wild. It fills me with a feeling of thankfulness for the support that I've received and helps me be more confident in a lot of ways that I think I wasn't before. So sure, the Vulp is part of my collection, but even more so, it might be a part of your collection. And that is just so cool to me. I can't really describe it better than that. Moving on, we do have a wonderful Balasong that I was sent this year that is the polar opposite of the Vulp in terms of production and process. The Magnet by JW Knives is a handmade beauty with a really inspiring story from Poland. 
This battle song was sent to me in the middle of 2022, and I was very excited for when it arrived. I had not heard of JW before, but the moment it was in my hands, I was very impressed. I'm going to be making a full review of this battle song later in the year because it really deserves its own video. But for now, I just want to bring up how incredible it is that JW has come so far as a maker. Back in 2019, JW posted their first battle song on Instagram. You can see the general idea of what the magnet would become in there, but the execution is substantially rougher. From these beginnings, JW's knives would rapidly improve with each iteration, especially when it comes to the quality of the blade grind. This is such an inspiring thing to look at for me. It really feels like watching an incredible amount of work paying off in a wonderful way. JW's ballast songs are works of art, and the amount that he charges for them is a steal. They also happen to be fantastic flippers, reminding me very fondly of my ELB Pro Flipper, but with bushings and a pleasing handle bias for the balance. Also, I just love the design of the blade. It is such a perfect buoy, and the swedge is just gorgeous, leading to some incredible lines that meet up in a pleasing fashion. The signal the signature logo on the blade is understated and sharp, and I love how it looks. And I'd love it too if the logo wasn't upside down. When will you learn? When will you learn that your actions have consequences? That is a good point. Why is it upside down, JW? Let me know in the comments, and also don't forget to like and subscribe while you're down there. Also, share this video with at least a dozen of your friends, or else an insatiable plague of butterflies will be called down upon the land, which doesn't sound that bad, but you have no idea what these butterflies have done. Well, well, the butterfly has the gun. The butterfly has the gun. As we move on through this list, I'm hoping that you can see the connections that I have with these battle songs, both historically and emotionally. They all mean something to me for a number of reasons, and this next one is no different. Here we have the Squid Industries Krakarakin V2.5 with a custom orange and black finish. I traded for this battle song from Vink Flips on Instagram in the middle of 2022 after my friend Ethan Blade Bias told me about it. The Kraken has always been an important battle song to me and to the history of this channel. You see, our Krakarakin V1 review came out on the first day of 2020, back at a time when we were a much smaller channel than we are today. At the time of release, we had less than 2,000 subscribers. This is all to say that Squid Industries, or more specifically, Lucas Cow, was willing to put his trust in our tiny channel and let us borrow one of the first products we were ever sent by a Balasong company to review. Nowadays, we are sent many things to review, but at the time, this was crazy. I've been a fan of Squid ever since I started taking the hobby seriously, and the idea of them wanting to work with us was wild to me. We had only just begun our journey, and yet they were willing to support us, and I think that's one of the things that I love about Squid. They do this a lot, too, not just with our channel. Squid has sent plenty of smaller YouTubers products to review, which is both helpful to their channel and good publicity for Squid. Lucas, the CEO of Squid Industries, has always had this mindset of supporting those around him and the hobby itself, and I think it shows in their willingness to support creators. Speaking of supporting creators, if you would like to support us, consider using squid.wilhirsch.gay. This is a web link that will take you to Squid Industries website and then automatically apply our discount code at checkout. So if you want to get a Squid Industries product, you can use our link and both get a little bit of a discount and support the channel at the same time. So when I finally got a hold of this beautiful Krakarakin 2.5, I was very happy. This has become one of my favorite flippers, both in terms of looks and just the fact that the Krakarakin 2.5 might be one of the best flipping ballast songs of all time. I said this back in the day, but Squid was really pushing the envelope when it came to putting a live blade onto an aluminum ballast song. Now it's taken as the norm, but at the time, people scoffed at the idea of an aluminum live blade. These people were quickly proven wrong, as within a few iterations, the Krakarakin has become the 10 out of 10 flipping score standard for our ballast on list. It really is just the best all-around flipper. There isn't anything special about it in any specific way, but it also means that it's good for pretty much every style of flipping, which makes it special in every way. I would consider this Balasong to be the magnum opus of Squid's product line, even considering the tsunami, as I doubt any Balasong will live up to the legacy of the Krakarakin. 
at least not for a long time. And so, even though I've heard it described as the white bread of Bala songs, I think that its status is nothing to scoff at, especially considering it's only been around since 2019, and yet it has changed the Bala song space in more ways than I can count. Plus, white bread's pretty damn good. I picked this from the orchard this morning. You have a bread orchard? Don't you question my methods, you little bitch. talked about your case last year. Well, yeah. This portion of the collection is very similar to my feelings about the Vulp. Like, yes, I know I talked about my case last year, but it has changed. However, the specific changes to my case aren't as important as the changes to your case, or the fact that you might have a case at all right now, because before it was very difficult to find a case specifically made for Balasons, which is a shame because our collections get expensive. My collection video last year was the first step towards a collaboration between myself and my case builder, who literally built all of my cases. Yeah, man, they really chose a good name, huh? After months of effort, we finally worked up a number of designs that I was satisfied with, and I made a whole video breaking them down here. So, if you somehow didn't know, you can purchase custom Balasong cases designed by me at cases.wilhirsch.gay. I am very excited about the existence of these, as they have been an idea in my head ever since my first case back in 2018. I thought that the community could use them, and now that they exist, I don't know if I'm emotionally ready for it. To clarify, it was a very emotional experience for me to see people getting and enjoying their vulps. But at Blade Show this year, it's going to be the first Balasong convention that I will be at since the launch of the cases. And this means that I'm going to see people who own the cases. Maybe even a lot of people with them. And I'm not exactly sure how that'll affect me, but honestly, I'm very excited about it. Funnily enough, while my main case is still the massive, wow, this is not, I... <laughs> <laughs> the massive case box drop. That was not me acting for the bit. I really <laughs> didn't remember that it was that heavy. The one I've been using the most is actually the smaller case Delta. I wonder why. <laughs> I found the capacity of seven Balasongs to be exactly what I need when traveling, and it's an easy way to bring around a few good flippers while I'm making the Will Hirsch Flips videos. It's got the exact split between hardiness and space and performance, which just makes it an invaluable part of my collection. While I'm here, I might as well mention that along with the cases, we've actually been making great efforts to improve our merch store as well. We now have really nice premium hoodies designed for Balasong flippers with embroidered logos and tight collars that make it easy to keep flipping even when it's cold out. You won't ever have to worry about your Balasong catching on the sleeves of these things. Alongside that, we also have new beanies that I have actually been enjoying a ton as they were way more comfortable than I expected. More importantly though, I thought I'd use this moment to announce that we have a brand new design launching alongside this video. This design is meant to celebrate the release of the Vulp, and it features a fox skull holding the trainer in its mouth. I am extremely excited about this design, and if you want one, make sure to get it soon, because I'm honestly not sure how long the stock will last, as the last harvest was not that great. But that's enough of my shilling. Now I think it's about time to reveal my top pick from my collection for 2023. B-roll, if you would. Damn. As if there was ever any doubt. Of course, my favorite Bala song from my collection this year is the Machine Wise Serif. However, this wasn't as clear cut as you might think. This title almost actually went to my production five Tsunami number 169 that I got from Blade Show last year. I have really come to love this thing. But the fact that I can disassemble the Serif without fear of ruining the screws, the fact that it is so well built, and the fact that I just love the design all coalesce into what is truly my favorite Bala song from last year. The Serif is a triumph as well, showing some incredible growth from its maker, MachineWise. MachineWise was first inspired to start making Bala songs by our 2019 collection video. The first product he made, the Delta 5T, was 
well, it's really weird, but it flipped shockingly well and was actually in my collection the next year. That's right, MachineWise was able to jump from being inspired by my collection to having a product in my collection within one year. So imagine my surprise when this dude jumps again from having a product in my collection to having the best product in my collection. And I own a lot of cool things, so you know this isn't hyperbole. The Serif really is an incredible balisong all around. I love its design language from the clean, hole-free faces and textures that remind me of why I love my Talisong, to the thin and sleek look of the extended buoy profile blade. I love how it flips, the way the handles carry momentum effortlessly from trick to trick, allowing me to get experimental and think of new ideas as I go. It encourages a sort of creativity that I cherish in my flipping, and I know that due to its build quality, I don't need to worry about dropping it either. Sure, the Tsunami has a better level of finish, and its build is just as good. But the difference in the hardware being much more fragile means I'm less confident about taking it apart to service it. I must say too that the design of the Serif with its thick line work and texturing does a great job of hiding all the scratches it's gotten from my many drops. I think it still looks almost new, and yet I've dropped it directly on concrete plenty of times. I love the smaller details hidden around this balisong, like the subtle blade milling, texturing, and the hidden machine-wise logo etched inside of each part of the handle. Before I get too far and start reviewing this thing again, I'll just say that yes, it's basically the best balisong that I own right now, in my opinion, and you should go watch the full review if you wanna know exactly why that is. Lastly, I just wanna put this out there. Machine-wise, Dalen, great job. I can't tell you how happy I am to see your progress like this. And I really love what you've been doing. I'm excited to try the Opus when it comes time, but one thing I'd like to say is I hope that the Serif remains a mainstay of your lineup. I think it's a really fantastic balisong and is a platform worth refining. And personally, I just wanna have more people get the chance to own one. Either way, great work as always. This is a piece that I am beyond proud to have in my collection. And so we come to the end of another collection video, but a beginning to a whole new year. Each time this happens, I've always been incredibly impressed with what the hobby has suddenly to offer, from new balisongs themselves to new tricks and flippers. I'm also excited to announce that we are working more and more on making the core of this channel better, both in terms of the content that we're producing, but even more so the way we go about making it. Brandon and I struggled last year with creative burnout for a number of reasons, but one thing that I realized along the way is that we went from making scripted and complex videos for fun to making more short form videos to keep uploads fresh. And that wasn't quite the good idea we thought it would be. Partially because the videos weren't shorter, they were longer. <laughs> Sure, we learned a lot from that time, but I think we lost a little bit of what made these videos special for us. Now, we're going to take the time to focus a bit more on creating something fulfilling for each of us in our videos, and I'm hopeful that you'll see a payoff of that as well. Speaking of seeing the payoff, our Patreon has helped us time and again, not only supporting the channel financially, but also emotionally. We are extremely grateful to be able to connect with you on the private community Discord server, even if we don't respond directly to something you post. Believe me when I say that I read almost everything on the Patreon side, and it warms my heart to see the kind of support that we get there. Having a backing of monetary support is great and all, but having a real, genuine connection to a community is even more cool. And I am so thankful to all of you who have stuck around through thick and thin supporting us. It means more than you could know. If you would like to join some amazing patrons like Benzine and Envix on the private community Discord, consider donating. Tiers start at just three bucks a month and every bit goes towards supporting the farm. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go check in with Farmer Brandon about the new harvest. Man, what I tell you, this is the best merch harvest we had in 20 odd years. Man, just makes me wanna shut down some curious lines of barbed wire, you know what I mean? Whew. Is this legal? Boy, I ain't telling you again. 